Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ginger Buck, and I'm really excited to tell you about what I did this summer. So uh, it's crafting biology to mine metals on Earth and beyond. So I don't know about you guys, but when I think about mining, this is kind of the picture that comes into my head. Uh, just like a lot of industry, uh, a lot of disruption to the landscape, and a lot of chemicals being uh, leached into water that runs off into local ecosystems. And that can be very disruptive. But one thing I also think about with mining is that it's heavy and expensive. Uh, and as we want to move to space, this in particular is going to be a problem for us. So astronauts in space are going to have to be very independent, especially as we're going farther out into the universe. So right now, um, with uh, low Earth orbits and in even the moon, like we can bring resources to astronauts who are living there. Um, if we were to set up a colony on the moon, for instance, but if we were going to go farther out into the universe, uh, that just becomes very unfeasible very quickly. And so there's something called in situ resource utilization, ISRU. And the big idea here is just to use the resources that you find on site, wherever you're trying to explore. So this will become especially important with mining because metals in particular are very expensive. They're very useful though. So we need to figure out how we can have those on planets to uh, replace electronic parts that are destroyed by radiation, but also to build structures as we're trying to set up in other places. So space is really important and I'm sure we can all agree, but what about resources on earth as well? So the global mining market uh, in 2023 was over a trillion dollars. And that's only projected to grow as uh, we shift away from a fossil fuels dominated economy to an electronics one. And all these electronics require very precious uh, rare metals that we're going to have to get even better at extracting because the mines that have customarily done this, uh, the resources are being depleted. So this is where my project comes in, biomining. So biomining first started uh, way, way back in the day when miners discovered that uh, microbes were releasing acids that would erode away the rocks surrounding these minerals and that would help minerals to be extracted much, much easier. And uh, biomining today um, is taking that even further. So big concept, using microorganisms to extract the metals, just like it always has been. Um, but today we're also trying to use uh, biology to remediate these uh, contaminated sites. So how are we doing all this? Like, it seems kind of remarkable. Well, um, before I get into that, biomining has some issues still that we do need to talk about. So this leaching takes much longer than it would need to if we wanted to scale it, especially as we're going to other planets. It needs to be faster. But uh, these acidic solutions being released into the environment are also causing problems. So we need to figure out how to treat that. So there's a lot of potential here. But there's a lot of things that still need to change and how we're going to do that. So there's this amazing tool called synthetic biology. And if you take away only one thing from this presentation, I want it to be this. Synthetic biology is very powerful. So what is that? Um, we can design and build microbes and potentially someday or the, or the other organisms that will produce products that we are designing them to do. So this is already pretty common today in drug development. Um, and we're working on biosensors. So the example I always think about with biosensors um, is you could put a microbe into your nose. And then when you're sick, when you blow, out, when you blow your nose, you look into your tissue. And if it's purple, you're like, oh, OK, that's a specific like, flu A. So you can design it to sense very specifically uh, the cell can sense its environment. And then we can learn about uh, biology from that sensor. And if uh, you blow into the note, your, your, uh, your tissue and you look and it's orange, then you can know, oh, this is a bacterial infection and different like colors could be very specific as to like what organism exactly is making you sick. So synthetic biology is a powerful tool. Um, some other things I want you guys to understand before I get into my project is the central dogma of biology. You all are probably familiar with these words, but DNA is the instructions for how our, uh, our body knows how to make all these proteins that are required for daily life functions. So there's DNA, which is the instructions. 
RNA, which is the messenger, it tells your cell how to make the protein and the protein does the function. Last thing, what are plasmids? Plasmids naturally exist already in bacteria and some eukaryotes. And it's just a loop of DNA that is separate from the chromosomal DNA. And that just means that it's uh, more readily available for gene expression. So making that protein that does the function. So a plasmid has lots of parts, but the ones we're going to talk about the origin replication, which just allows us to have many plasmids. And the more plasmids, the more protein we get. An antibiotic resistance, which as engineers allows us to check um, whether the plasmid is actually being produced and the gene of interest, which is the part that tells your cell to make the protein. Okay, so now that we have all of this background information, we can understand what I've been up to this summer. So I used a tool called PCR to make DNA fragments. Then I put them all together into a plasmid, so just a loop of DNA. Then I put that loop into a cell in a process called transformation. In this case, we were using yeast cells. Then the cell took that information and used that to make a protein that binds copper. And the protein should go to the outside of the cell. And this will allow us to bind copper for biomining. But I think the most exciting part here is that we could change the protein to bind any metal. So simply by changing the gene of interest in the plasmid, the loop of DNA, the yeast will know to make a different protein and the protein can bind any metal you could think of. And remember back to the biosensor example where you could tell what's making you sick. So the yeast could be able to sense its environment as well and then know what metals are around and then only make the proteins that'll bind those metals, which will save it a lot of energy. So, how did it actually go? Remember, synthetic biology is a powerful tool, but it's also very poorly characterized for the moment. So, biology is really complicated, and we're only just beginning to understand how we can engineer it to make things we want. Um, on this slide is a subset of gels that I've run this summer. And, uh, a gel is basically a slab of jello that goes between two electrodes and the positive electrode attracts the DNA and they separate based on how long the DNA fragment is. So because of this, I'm able to determine if I actually made the DNA fragment I was expecting. And in about 90% of cases, I did not. But sometimes it works. And similarly, um, when you're trying to put the DNA into the cell, uh, a lot of times you'll just run into issues with that too. So out of these 12 uh, plates here on the right, only one of them actually grew cells that I wanted it to. And this is only a subset of plates I did for the whole summer. But also, I want to clarify that a lot of things went really well. I got the DNA fragments I needed. So these bright bands here in the middle, you can see that those are all what I was expecting to. Um, and there's a lot of streaking happening on the right, but you can just purify out just the DNA part that you want. The plasmid, the loop of DNA, successfully transformed into yeast. So the yeast cell has the DNA that I wanted it to. And then I took some of those colonies, highlighted in green, and I uh, uh, tested again if that DNA was actually what I expected to. And it was. And then I sent it out for sequencing to another company. And when they sent back the report, it was 100% base pair by base pair what we had designed, which was really exciting. And I had several versions of the plasmid and one, another one of them grew as well. And we're still working on the last couple, but we haven't done testing on this, but it has a lot of promise just even from the fact that it grew on the plate. So I did another bit of testing um, I grew over several hours a uh, yeast that had the plasmid that I designed and um, yeast that didn't. And uh, mine is the red line here. Uh, it grew much more slowly. And this is kind of what we would generally expect because I'm asking it to produce extra proteins than what it needs for its survival. And so it's diverting energy to that task. Um, and this is just something we're going to have to keep in mind as we're developing these tools uh, to go to space. 
So uh, finally, we can quantify copper binding. So I did several dilutions of copper and measured its fluorescence. And uh, um, now that we have this information, we would be able to assess uh, how the yeast is actually binding the copper. So this is what I'm planning to do uh, for the next week or so, last bit of my project. Um, there are several issues with how this actually went. We found out that uh, what the solution we were using to measure this, uh, they don't sell it anymore. Uh, so we're just trying to workshop that whole process, but I'm very hopeful. So as we're continuing to explore the far reaches of our universe, um, I think there's a lot of potential with synthetic biology and in particular biomining to um, take all these metals that we need from on site when we arrive at these exciting new places to build all the electronics and housing we'll need uh, to, to learn about our universe. So thank you very much. Does anyone have questions? Yay, oh. great job, Ginger. Thank um, you. See, yeah, so ask questions in the chat. You can also raise your hand. Sanjoy has his hand raised right away. Go ahead, Sanjoy. Ginger, this was awesome. Thank you. So I do a lot of my field work in Western Australia, and there the iron ore mining is completely devastating the landscape. And part of the iron extraction from the iron ore is that you need to reduce the iron. Uh, so uh, you remove the oxygen from the iron ore to get the pure iron. And to do that, you use a lot of coal, huge CO2 emissions as a result. I was wondering from your experience with copper, is, could there be something similar with iron to use biology to extract the iron from the iron ore and not need all this coal to smelt the iron out? Yes, exactly. That's kind of the whole hope of the project. Um, because the protein can be designed to bind very specifically, um, you can remove the iron from all sorts of other impurities that may be uh, surrounding it. And uh, I kind of didn't get into this, but if you have like iron combined with like nickel and gold and all sorts of metals all together, you can even separate those by running it through a series of filters, for instance. So just dissolve it into water and then like the first filter will bind copper and then the next one gold and iron. And so then you can just um, get exactly the metal you were hoping to purify. And it's just, it's so much less complicated than current smelting methods. But the challenge remains scale, right? From what I understood exactly. from your talk, yeah. Yeah, that's the main area to go here, I think. Just understanding how the whole system works so we can do that. Awesome. We have a question from Corey in the chat. Um, you mentioned using biomining to clean up sites from contamination with metals. But could this work for other types of contamination from non-metals? Um, I was just talking about this with people yesterday, actually. Yes. Um, so the protein just has to be designed to bind whatever it is you're hoping to purify out of the water. So metals are really easy just because it's one atom. Uh, it's just like on the periodic table. But someone was asking about plastics yesterday, and that's kind of more complicated because plastics are polymers. And so it just gets into like generative protein design. And there's a lot of hope there with uh, large language models recently. So I'm optimistic that we could use biomining to clean up all sorts of things from water that shouldn't be in there. 